It's me, Freeze Cracked, again. I thought I'd just mess around a little bit today with a piece of obsidian. And uh, you can just watch if you want to. Kind of hard for me to remember what not to do when I'm working obsidian since I usually work hard rock. You probably noticed I stepped down a bopper size and I'm just barely tapping it. But the problem there is you can start, you know, chewing stuff up if you don't hit it. This is too thin and messed up, so just tap that off. Some little cracks and folds and stuff in this stuff. If you get a big piece and go for the middle, you know, it's one thing, but these little bombs or whatever that fell off by themselves and cooled at their own pace are somewhat inconsistent internally. They fold on themselves. Like there's a, you can kind of see there's like a fold in there that comes over into there. So you don't really know what size piece you're working with. Sometimes you can you can think you got a big old rock and find out different. It looks like that fold or crack right down here probably goes all the way down to the bottom of it almost. So that may not stay there. I got some weird folds and stuff up in here too. I'm kind of braiding at the moment because I'm hitting above edges. It's always fairly hard not to cut yourself though. I pretty much usually do cut myself with... One of the things I've done before is I've taken my uh, little piece of deer skin and held it underneath this thing as I'm working and that does help. But I'm always ambivalent about wanting to feel the work and, and be able to actually, you know, have the, the results from having the optimal feel and stuff versus protecting my hand. You definitely need to wear glasses or something when you're working this crap because it's a little you can see that little uh, glass dust goes everywhere. It's just like a little dust bomb of glass when you hit it and abrade it. Crushed it.
really better using a fine or a brader on this thing because like that big that um, that heavier a brader just keeps flaking away at it and it doesn't doesn't work. Big old square edge here I really need to deal with. Kind of interesting. Every once in a while, on on uh, flint napping, there's there's just a few flakes that can make or break your work on a particular point. You know, there's just like every so often while you're making it, you see this this one one flake that's just really going to do a lot of good. And those are the ones that you gotta you gotta make them. because I was hitting on the end. Well, so this side is not too bad, but I still got this big old weird lip thing like it's got a mouth on the front of it, and I got the uh, big old square edge on this side. So we get rid of the mouth. The board bites me again. The reason I'm, you know, being kind of hesitant on this part is, I mean, that's that's a large part of my length. But oh well. It doesn't work to hit straight up and down very well on these square edges because it just makes it hinge underneath. Actually did pretty good for what it was. Well, I think I may have to just bite the bullet and lose length on this uh, mouth area and see what I can do to get rid of it. I just don't know what to think of working obsidian. I, uh, you know, started out like everybody else and did try and work a little glass and work a little obsidian, and I, I really don't don't prefer it. But on the other hand, I mean, it's a valid. It's a valid material to work, and there's a lot of it in the world, and I've got a lot of it. It can be kind of dramatic sometimes, make a nice finish point sometimes. Pretty 
dangerous to work an area like that. It's best to be sort of careful and conservative and not just go for the gusto with one hit or something. Kind of come in at angles and be very aware of where the center line is on that thing. it. Sometimes you'll have those and you won't have a huge amount of width and you're kind of worried about it and you have a tendency to try and do too much before you get those off but I kind of feel like it's best to get them off and get an edge to work with and then try and get aggressive if you think you need to to make up for the lost, lost opportunity of using the width to thin. Stuff is just so soft. It's like it's not even there, honey. Well, I almost screwed up on that, but it was a good flake. I, the reason I say I almost screwed up was I caught a little too much of it and I let it turn down in my hand, but the flake was already on its way and didn't seem to mind. I really don't have the best te technique sometimes. I do stuff, I just do a lot of short cutting and risk taking as opposed to being meticulous. The side isn't looking hugely bad. The side's kind of getting okay. This is about the time I should start asking myself what I'm doing. It's sort of a joke. I should have asked myself that a long time ago. I do that some. I do that quite a bit. I get to. Uh, I get to work in the puzzle, and I don't really ask myself where the puzzles go, and I'm just working where it is at the moment. And you're kind of like, well, wait a minute, am I making an andice here or, you know, an angostura or what? And the answer is, I don't know. I'm making a mess. This side's a lot flatter. You know, I still got that little fold in there, though. And I still have no idea... I mean, it looks like it can go pretty deep, so I don't even know if I'm going to lose an inch of length or something on this. Very possible. That was a pretty good flake. I really, in a way, would like to go indirect, but I'd 
problems you run into is that with some of the softer materials, the, the velocity that an indirect flake runs can be too high. Just cut myself with that one. See, there's like three flakes that just did a lot of good. And that's why I say, you know, it's, sometimes it's just an individual flake that will benefit you more than 10 or 20 of the regular flakes. What time is it? 16 minutes. I'm going to take a glue break. Bye.